The Boxcar Children by Gertrude Chandler Warner. Chapter 11, The Doctor Takes a Hand. The days went by happily for the boxcar children. They found more treasures in the dump and Henry worked every day for Dr. Moore. One noon, Henry came home with some new stockings for Benny. Benny was very happy about them and made everyone admire them. And when Jessie looked at the new stockings, she had a happy thought. She carefully washed Benny's old stockings and hung them up to dry. That afternoon, she and Violet sat down with the work bag between them to make a bear for Benny. You must make a tail too, Jessie, begged Benny, watching her put on the arms and legs and head. Bears don't have tails, said Jessie. Your old bear didn't have a tail. But this bear must have a tail, replied Benny, knowing that Jessie would put on two tails if he asked her to. What kind of tail, asked Jessie at last. Long and thin, said Benny happily, so I can pull it. Benny, cried Jessie laughing. But she made a tail long and thin just as Benny had ordered. What's his name, Jessie? asked Benny when at last the bear was handed over to him. I haven't thought about a name, replied Jessie. Why don't you think up a nice name for him? Well, you made him out of my old stockings. Let's name him Stockings. All right, Stockings it is, agreed Jessie, trying not to laugh. And from that day on, the bear's name was Stockings as long as he lived, and he lived to be a very old bear indeed. One afternoon, Jessie saw how long Benny's hair was getting, and she cut it with violet scissors. Benny stood quietly while she did it. But while his sisters were getting supper, he said to himself, Jessie cut my hair, I'll get violet scissors, and cut Watch's hair. He will look better. He found Violet's scissors and made Watch lie down on his side. Then he began to cut the hair off. Benny said, good dog, Watch. You are Jessie's dog, and so I will cut a J in your hair. Hold still now. Watch lay still, and Benny began to cut a J. It was not a very good J, but it looked a little like one. Soon Benny had cut off all the hair on one side with a J in the middle. He stood admiring his work, and just then Jessie came to see what he was doing. Benny, she cried, what are you doing? And then she began to laugh. Oh, Violet, come and see, she called. Watch looks so funny. Jessie laughed and laughed until she almost cried. Violet laughed until she did cry. Then she could not stop crying. She cried and cried. At last, Jessie made up her mind that Violet was really sick. You must go to bed, Violet, she said. She helped her carefully into the boxcar and put pine needles all around her and under her. Then she wet a handkerchief from the cold water of the brook and laid it on her little sister's hot head. I wish Henry would come home, said Jessie. What shall we do? When Henry came at last, he looked at Violet and said that maybe she had a cold. Maybe she sat too long by the brook, he said. If Violet is very sick, she ought to go to the hospital, said Jessie. Yes, I know that, said Henry, and we don't want her to go to the hospital if we can help it. We should have to tell her name. Yes, said Jessie, then Grandfather could find us. The two older children sat up with Violet. They put cold water on her head, but after dark, Violet shook all over, and Jessie was frightened. She covered Violet all over with pine needles, but still she shook. They could not get her warm. I'm going to get Dr. Moore, said Henry. I'm afraid Violet is very sick. Then Henry started to run. He ran even faster than he had run in the race. Down the hill into the town he ran until he came to Dr. Moore's house. Please come, he cried. Violet is very sick. The doctor said, come and get into my car. He did not ask Henry which way to go, but the car went up the right road. When they came to the woods, he said to Henry, Stay here in the car. He ran alone up the hill to the boxcar. It seemed like magic that he knew where to go. When Dr. Moore came back, he was carrying Violet in his arms. Jessie and Benny and Watch came too. They all got into the car. Are you going to take her to a hospital? asked Henry. No, said Dr. Moore. I'm taking her to my house. When they stopped at last, Dr. Moore's Moore carried Violet into the house and said to his mother, Violet is very sick. We must put her to bed. 
Mrs. Moore hurried around, opening beds and bringing pillows, and Mary came from the kitchen with hot water bottles. After a while, Violet began to get warm. Then Mrs. Moore came to get the other children. You must stay here all night, she said. She gave Henry and Benny a big bed, and Jessie slept in a little one. But Violet was so sick that the doctor did not go to bed all night. He would not leave her. He sat by her side until 10 o'clock in the morning. Before 10 o'clock, a man came to see the doctor. Mary told him he could wait, so he sat down in the living room. Soon Benny came in. Where is the doctor? asked the man crossly. He is up in Violet's room, answered Benny. This means $5,000 to him if he will come down, said the man. Oh, he can't come down now, said Benny. What do you mean, boy? asked the man. What is he doing? He's taking care of my sister Violet, said Benny. She is sick. And you mean he wouldn't leave her even if I gave him $5,000? asked the man. Yes, answered Benny. That's what I mean. Then the man said, you see, I have lost a little boy and I think the doctor knows where he is. My little boy is just about as old as you are. Well, if you don't find him, maybe you can have me, remarked Benny. I like you. You do, cried the man. Come and get up in my lap. Benny climbed into the man's lap. Have you got a dog, he asked. No, said the man. He is dead now, but you can see him in my watch. Here it is. Benny looked at the dog. He looks like a very good dog, he said. I have a dog, too. His name is Watch. Just then, Watch came in with Dr. Moore. Good morning, said Dr. Moore. Benny, you can go and play with Watch. Benny ran out and the man said, Dr. Moore, where are my grandchildren? That little boy is one of them, said Dr. Moore quietly. That beautiful little boy, said the man. Yes, said Dr. Moore. They are all good children, but they are afraid of you. They are afraid you will find them. How do you know that, asked the man. They have changed their name, said the doctor. He looked at the man in a queer way. The big boy changed his name on field day. You saw him then. I saw him. What did he change his name to, asked the man. Henry James, said the doctor. The running boy, cried the man. The boy who run, won the free-for-all? I liked that boy, so I am his grandfather. And that's the end of chapter 11.